Hello drivers, welcome to this new comparison video where we spot the changes and differences between the oldest playable build available from February 2011 and the final version. I am using just any one footage for this purpose and it appears that the debrief mission that should occur at the end of the prologue was not recorded, so we will skip that one and maybe come back to it later. Instead, we will directly go to the bridge between the prologue and the first chapter, which will be the main topic of today's video. And it starts with a very interesting piece of making of material. Storyboard cutscenes. The storyboards of any game of the Driver series were sadly never shared publicly, unlike other video games that let you see them as a bonus gallery. So it's very cool to be able to watch them in this early build. Another info that this build gave us about the storyboards is that they were made by CSI Vancouver, showing a bit of worldwide cross collaboration studios in the Ubisoft group. Even if Driver San Francisco remains currently the last game Ubisoft Reflections developed as the lead studio and this outsourcing support remain minimal. Comparing them with the final game, we can see that the storyboards were failfully translated into CGI cutscenes with almost the same angle and camera work. Then we go back in game in both versions, but although this part will be all about tutorial, the length is drastically different because the beta build does not have all the final features yet. What they both share, however, is of course the tutorial section about shift that you can now use on the second height level. In the old version, it feels very rough as there is no Thanos speaking or reacting. Maybe if I could hop a building or a whole block. Whoa! Making the shift even more as a gameplay gimmick and not directly story related. The old version also requires you to change shift height a few times, unlike the final, which is happy after the first time. However, that's where the tutorial part ends in the old build and chapter 1 starts, which is far from being the case in the final version. Indeed, in the final version, the game still has to explain you the additional content that was added thanks to the game being delayed by a year from fall 2010 original release to the September 2011 final one. The side content includes the dares, the activities, the willpower currencies and the garages. It is done by a fast-paced short tutorial sequencing with easy challenge and straightforward options to choose since you don't have a lot of willpower so the selection of car you can buy at this stage is very narrow. Anyway, the garage feature was a late addition to the game as an attempt to fuel the in-game currency by using it to buy cars. Remember that in the early stages of the game, proved by the beta menu documentation, you unlocked car just by shifting into them, as it is the case in Elenoir. French interview with the producer Marie-Jo Leroux confirms that the garages were added with this purpose, following the addition of all the side content and the fact shift was not limited by your amount of willpower, like the boost bar in Burnout, but instead refilled itself with time. Now that the willpower at change its function, the garages and the cars collectible related were the right call to make the currency useful. That's why in the beta build you can already see garages in very early stages with a yellow color instead of blue that are missing building models and they don't have the exit garages animations done yet as we will see in further video, instead making you respawn at the icon place. Garages are also awarding income regular magnetic so you end up with way too many willpower very quick anyway, but that was also the case in the beta without being explained to the player first. The dares might already be present in early stage as well, with very tiny dots on the map and in different colors, but they do not get a tutorial at this point in the beta build. 
Now the PC version has a bug which prevents the trigger of the chapter 1 beginning screen and instead you are just spawning in shift mode after the last tutorial without even knowing you are not in the prologue anymore. In both versions you need to beat city missions in order to unlock the story mission so we will start by scaring the driving instructor. Nice driving. You can see that Tanner has a different face in the picture in picture but the mission remains the same with the exception of the actions such as big jump giving way more earth rate bits in the beta and when the objective is reached there is an additional dialogue before the end screen. Oh, half price lessons and a bit of respect. Please. Anything you want. The text of the mission successful screen was also changed and the car will abruptly despawn when the mission is done. You also get another tutorial this time for RAM which is absent from the beta at this point. Just pick a car, John. There is still one city mission before unlocking the story one. Let's head up to meet the hit where we are for the first time chased by the police. That's where we can see a change in the head user display, the number of police vehicles chasing you. It is placed at a different position next to the map and it uses the same font as the speedometer in the beta while it is placed next to the timer in the final and it uses its font in accordance. That's better because in the beta if you expand the in-game map the police icon does not move and it blocks a bit the readability. Tanner's face in the pip is still different as you can imagine. You might have spotted at this point that the city missions were giving you a lot of willpower while they do not in the final version. That's why in the beta you are already at 60,000 at this stage and only 6,000 in the final version. They balance the rewards and earning with the additions of theirs, activities and the garage income so you don't have too much willpower too soon I believe. The end of the mission lacks the short in-game cutscene as it does in the final with the meeting of someone that has a jacket with the logo of the local supermarket on it. I'm gonna have to help him any way I can. Now it's time for a first story mission of chapter 1. It was also rewarding you with willpower and the mood is very different during the in-game parts of the cutscenes, not really matching the mood of the CGI parts. As the final shot of the in-game cutscene demonstrates once more, Many ads billboards were added to the final version, certainly to pursue the goal of use real ads in game, even if it was not really used in the end. There is no real changes here besides at the end where the mission successful screen only occurs after the CGI cutscenes in the beta. While it makes more sense to have it before as in the final version, otherwise you get teleported twice for no reason. Just pull over so I can break your neck. Wait a couple minutes, then punch me in the face as hard as you can. Whoa! There's no part of me that wants to think what I need to stop. And now we need to beat two city missions again. Breaking news is mostly the same. The van camera is zooming more in the beta as well as minor different cameras used during in-game cutscenes. Gotta bag is a big jump. I know just the place. Tanner is also not shown in the ending shot, but instead it is the civilian he is supposed to replace, and the van is despawned while in the final you are starting again in shift to prevent the player to see that. Race found is the same aside for the graphical glitches on the first checkpoint point, and the exit option was replaced by continue. And now to the final mission of this chapter, Kidnapped. The traffic is much denser in the beta, reminiscing of the prologue density. 
Don't mind the boost bar in the final version footage, it was recorded in a new game plus, so it's not relevant. The interesting part is also one of the hardest technical challenges of Driver San Francisco development, the fast shift teleport. It has been said in interviews that this ability was hard to code but it works very well in the final version. In the beta build, we can see it in action when Tanner is looking for the kidnapped woman and we can notice that the field of view is much smaller, maybe to hide the textures and world loading happening at such fast pace. When you have opened the trunk, the screen fades to come back to Tanner's cars, which is indeed how fast shift was supposed to behave before further advancements were made to allow the fast travel to be shown in game. You also have 10 seconds less on the timer to go to the embarcadero. The trunk is also a bit glitchy and flickers when you spawn in it. Final trunk shot shows that the car was a bit repositioned in the final to show more the public square. The end part is a bit different, with the final version referring to ongoing takedown and the beta to effective takedown with a different description. The final version should require you to hit the target twice, but it was buggy on my playthrough and one was indeed enough. The ending is smoother in the final, while the beta is making it look like a tutorial and less like a narrative mission. Something that was really made better in the final with tweaks here and there. Why, thank you. The in-game cutscenes has small differences, such as different camera angle, but it shows once more that the hospital design was not finished at all, as you cannot expect it is an hospital in the beta as no specific assets were placed yet. And now, one of the final differences for today, the evidence board which is not implemented yet and therefore is only mentioned by the game as a reminder. Again, the evidence board is one of the tricks they use to strengthen the narrative and not making the game feels like only a succession of activities and challenges, but rather a structured story throughout the game with an investigation in Tanner's mind. Finally, the city unlock video were already covered in a specific video, but that's the very end of the first chapter and obviously it is in an early stage and still need a lot of optimization as the final demonstrates. And here we are with chapter 1 completed. Next time we will cover the wall chapter 2 that will also be a big chunk of changes and differences to cover, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, it is the Redriver Club time because I want to personally thank my members who are supporting the channel by being film director producers, DriverDimension.com, French Contact, Neurosins, Snoopy and CarGuy50. It's going to be an almost 100 person French club at that rate. You can also be a road builder to get access to the custom emojis at the lowest rate possible. Click on the join button to learn more. See you soon drivers.